Hello and welcome to this video on the unbalanced star network where we're going to perform some mathematical analysis and calculate some currents uh, that flow in an unbalanced star network and hopefully at the end plot a phasor diagram of our results. Hopefully if you're watching this video you've already watched our video on the balanced star network um, but in this case we're not going to have a balanced network we're going to have an unbalanced network and we'll see um, what that entails and in our previous video when we looked at the balanced star network we found that the neutral current the current that flows through this neutral connection here was zero and no surprises in this video we're going to find that that's not the case for an unbalanced network so let's follow a similar method that we saw in our previous video um, we'll take this instance of an unbalanced network, but we'll assume that the supply voltage is still balanced, but um, we'll, we'll assume that the impedances are not balanced in this particular example. So we'll use the same supply voltages that we saw in our example of a balanced network. We have V1, V2, and V3 being equal to 240 volts at angles of zero, minus 120, and plus 120, respectively. But whereas last time we said that Z1, Z2 and Z3, these star connected um, loads are all equal in our balanced network, this time we'll say this, that Z1 is equal to 4 plus J2 ohms, Z2 is equal to 3 minus, three, uh, minus J3 sorry, uh, ohms, and Z3 is equal to 5 plus J ohms or J1 ohms. In order to calculate our phase currents easily, it's probably best to convert these impedances into polar form. And we'll see why in just a second. But just by using a Pol function on your calculator, um, we can convert these uh, impedances that are in rectangular form or Cartesian form into polar form. And we get something that looks like this. And the reason we've done this is because we can perform our divisions uh, using Ohm's law. Um, a bit more easily in polar form and we can say just like in our balanced example we can say that I1 must be equal to V1 divided by Z1, I2, uh, V2 divided by Z2 and so forth and when we do that remembering when we set up this division um, we'll, do, we'll do an example here with, with I1 we'll say that I1 was V1 over Z1 so that's 240 at an angle of 0 divided by uh, our impedance Z1, which was 4.472 at an angle of 26.565. When we do a division in polar form, we're simply dividing the magnitude, so 240 divided by 4.472, and we're subtracting the angles, so we'd have 0 minus 26.565. And so we get a result here for I1 of 53.6673, at an angle of minus 26.565 degrees. And that's a current, so it's given in amps. Uh, similarly, we won't go through the working for each one, but we can get I2 and I3 as being equal to 5.56.5638 uh, at an angle of minus 75, and I3 47.0681 at an angle of 108.699. Note when calculating here the double negative for I2, um, we've subtracted uh, minus 120 minus minus 45. So that double negative becomes a positive, hence, hence the, the minus 75 here. Just watch out for no double negatives when the impedance already has a negative angle. Remember also what we said in our previous video on the balanced star network. We said that the line currents in a star network are equal to the phase currents in a star network. And so we don't need to calculate the line currents in this case. That's not the case in a delta network. Uh, but in this case, we don't need to calculate the line currents. We already know them if we know the phase currents. The last thing we're gonna do is we are going to uh, do the same thing as we did in our balanced example for a, a star network. We're gonna add all of these phase currents together because our neutral current must be the sum at the star point here of all of these three currents added together. And so to do that, when we're adding 
um, complex numbers. It's much easier to do that in uh, in rectangular form rather than in polar form. And so what we'll do is we'll convert these back just using the rec function on a scientific calculator. Um, we can convert back to rectangular form. And we have these three currents here um, in rectangular form, I1, I2, and I3. And when we add those together, we get a total neutral current that is not zero, as was the case in a balanced network. We saw that that came to zero when we added them all together. In this unbalanced network, we're getting a non-zero neutral current of 47.55 minus J34.06. So definitely not zero um, for our neutral current here. And what we can do if, if we want is we can convert that back into um, into polar form, just so that we've got our currents um, in, in both forms. That comes out as 58.49 at an angle of minus 35.61 degrees when it's in polar form. The last thing we'll do before we finish up this video is just to show everything that we've calculated so far on a phasor diagram. And here it is. What we'll hopefully notice straight away is that it's nowhere near as symmetrical um, with e equal phase separation um, as, as our previous uh, example, which was a balanced network. We have an arrangement that looks like this. Just a quick reminder, uh, if you haven't been watching our previous videos, that we always measure our angles from the horizontal. And so the horizontal is zero degrees. Any positive angle um, goes upwards from that starting point, that horizontal, and any negative angle downwards from that horizontal. And so we have our three currents which are marked on here, I1, I2, and I3. But I've also marked on in this sort of dotted green line here, we have our neutral current which we've calculated also, um, which was 58.49 amps at an angle of minus 35.61 degrees. So I hope you found this video useful on how we can take that same approach as we saw in the previous video on the balanced network, but also apply that to the unbalanced network in order to find the neutral current that flows in the network.